Hello students, welcome to the class. So in the previous class, we have finished with the topic on chapter on chemi chemical bonding and molecular structure. Yes, and we have discussed all the concepts based on that topic. It might be based on valence electrons, then Lewis dot structure for writing the symbols, Lewis symbols for the elements, ionic bond factors affecting ionic bond, covalent bond factors favoring ionic covalent bond. Then we have seen bond parameters, might be bond length, bond angle, bond energy, and bond order. Then we have also seen Lewis structures for writing different, representing different molecules, or it might be different ions, right? Then we have spoken about the polar nature of the covalent bond. Yes. And even we have speak, spoken about the covalent character in polar compounds, ionic compounds. And that is based on Fagen's rule, right? Then we have discussed about valence bond theory, resonance, Geometry of the molecules we have seen, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, abbreviated as VSEPR, concept of hybridization, which involves S, P, D orbitals, shapes of some of the simple molecules we have seen. Apart from that, we have also discussed regarding molecular orbital theory for homonuclear diatomic molecules. Yes, that means which are made up of the diatomic having two atoms and the both atoms are same. Yes, so diatomic molecules we have seen. And lastly, we have discussed about hydrogen bonding. That is uh, hydrogen bond and its types and what is the significance of hydrogen bonding? What is the importance of hydrogen bonding? Yes, intermolecular and intramolecular. Yes, so from this topic, expected questions are more in number. Yes we can expect four questions or maximum five questions from this topic. So it is a very important topic, I can say. So we can expect a maximum of five questions from this topic. Yes. So we are now going to discuss about the multiple choice questions based on this topic. I hope all the concepts have cleared very properly. Yes. So with this concepts in mind, we'll see one by one also when, when we come across certain questions, what question concepts are being involved. So with this, we'll start with the multiple choice questions. MCQs. Okay. First question. In PO4 minus 3 ion, the formal charge on each oxygen atom and PO bond order respectively are. Okay. So they have asked us, they have given us PO4 minus 3 ion. So let us write... PO4 minus 3 ion, PO4 minus 3, and they have asked us to calculate the formal charge. First, we should be knowing the structure. So, T, V, S, and U. So, total number of valence electrons is 8 plus uh, 4 into oxygen. Each oxygen atom will have 8 electrons. Each oxygen atom will have 8 electrons. So, 8 into 4. 32, 8 and plus 8 is 40. So this comes out to 40. Okay. Valence electrons on phosphorus are 5. Valence electrons on oxygen are 6 into 4. Yes. So 6 into 4 plus what happens here? Minus 3 means what? Plus 3. Yes. So total how much it becomes? 6 4s are 24. 24 plus 5 is 29. 29 plus 3, 32. Yes, 40 minus 32, T minus V. So how much we get? We get 40 minus 32 is 8, correct? And then 32 minus 8, correct? So 32 minus 8 comes out to what? It comes out to 24. So what are these all? So here we have 8 shared electrons and 24 unshared electrons. So let us, with this, let us try to write the structure for phosphate ion. So P is at the center and there are four oxygen atoms. So I will represent the oxygen atoms like this. So here is the oxygen atom. Okay. So how many bonds are there? They have said eight electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Correct. So there are eight electrons. Is that correct? Phosphorus, five electrons plus each oxygen atom has six valence electrons. Is that right? Okay. So these are the bond electrons. So I will represent them like this. Then how many unshared electrons? There are 24 unshared electrons. So each oxygen will have 
see there are six uh, electrons on each oxygen yes so it becomes total of eight right so six on each oxygen so it is six plus six twelve six is a eighteen six four is a twenty four okay when we do the structure please or observe students when we immediately do the stru structure let uh, is this going correct with our formal charge minus 3 okay so this uh, this is the total charge so the formal charge we have to verify such that it should obey the to the charge on individual atom should be equal to the formal charge so let us try to find it out let me call this as 1 this as 2 this as 3 and this as 4 and phosphorus will be 5 so formal charge on phosphorus formal charge on phosphorus formula is what formula is v minus l minus half into yes okay so valence electrons on phosphorus are 5 minus lone pairs are 0 minus half into bond pairs are bond pair electrons are 8 so this is 4 so 5 minus 4 is plus 1 so phosphorus gets the formal charge of plus 1 what about formal charges on oxygen atoms all oxygens are same here. Can you see here? All oxygens are same. So I'll calculate for one oxygen, I'll get all. Six minus, there are how many uh, lone electrons? There are six minus half into two. So six minus six is zero. So all the oxygen atoms, according to this formal charge calculation, will get the charge equal to minus one. Now let us verify whether it is correct. So all this individual charges should match with three. So if you see, is it matching with three? Phosphorus, first point, phosphorus, we will say it is matching because plus one minus one gets cancelled. So it is minus three. See students, we have to also observe Phosphorus is having how many valence electrons? Five. Are there five valence electrons? No, it is forming only four bonds understanding it is forming one two three four bonds so it should form how many five bonds so there should be one electron can i keep one electron and say it is verified no what i will do is to make this work out so this is not a proper structure i say are you getting it is not the proper structure so what i will do any one out of these oxygen atoms one pair of these electrons i will make it to form a double bond with phosphorus you can consider any one okay so when i make this to form a double bond with phosphorus let me check now let me verify the new formal charge so formal charge on these three will remain minus one only okay now i have to verify only on phosphorus and oxygen so formal charge on let me say phosphorus five valence electrons minus zero unpaired minus half into so how many bonds? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So 10. So 5 minus 2, 5 is a 10. 5 minus 5 is what? 0. Now when I put this structure, the formal charge on, the new formal charge on phosphorus is what? It is 0. Okay. Next, verify it for this oxygen from where I have taken the electrons. Formal charge on oxygen. 6 minus, there are only 4 unpaired electrons minus half into, how many bonds? 4. So 2 ones are 2, 2s are 4. 6 minus 4 is how much? 2. 2 minus 2 is how much? 0. So this oxygen is also now having the formal charge equal to 0. So these two, that is the most stable because we have to reduce the formal charge. Yes. So now verify. What is the total charge? Minus 1 plus minus 1 plus minus 1. So is equal to minus 3. So what is the formal, formal charge? Is it equal to minus 3? Yes. So this is the actual structure for phosphate ion. Understood. So what is the help use of formal charge? Formal charge will help us to predict which is the proper structure. Understanding? So you have to verify everything. Phosphorus is having five valence electrons, but it is forming only four bonds. Now here five electrons are involved. Is that clear? Are you all understanding? So this is the structure. Now using this structure, what they have said, I will write the structure. Phosphorus, there is oxygen. There is oxygen here, double bond O and oxygen so here i can say single bonded oxygens are having formal charge of minus one and i can write the resonance structure for this also how i will i write i'll put double bond here and remaining all oxygens i'll write single bond so these are having formal charges minus again i can put one more resonance structure wherein single bond over here and i will put double bond here remaining oxygen atoms so this oxygen minus charge, minus charge, minus charge. Or I can write one more structure where here there is double bond O and single bond, single bond O, single bond O. So they will have minus charges. So how many resonance structures are possible? There are almost four resonance structures possible. 
Okay, so what is the total charge? Now, how to calculate this? They have asked what formal charge on each oxygen atom. What is the total charge? Total charge is equal to minus three. Correct. Okay, so the average formal charge on each oxygen atom. See. Total charge is minus three. Average, how many are possible here? Four structures are possible. Therefore, minus three divided by four, and this comes out to three by four is zero point seven five. So it comes out to minus zero point seven five. So this is the formal charge on each oxygen atom. Okay. Now they have asked bond order. So how we have I have told you when I was discussing about resonance, how to find the bond order. Average. Which bond they have asked? They have asked average PO bond order. Right. So what is the formula we have studied? Total number of bonds divided by total number of resonating structures. Do you remember this? We have discussed in one of our class resonance structures. Correct. So total number of PO bonds. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five. In any of the structure, there are five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So total number of PO bonds are how many? Five. Correct. Divided by how many structures are possible? There are four. So again, what will be the bond order? Four ones are point two five. So bond order is what? One point two five. And what is the formal charge? Zero point seven five. Zero point seven five. So let us see which is our option. So first they have asked formal charge zero point seven five. Three options are there. So and bond order is one point five. So option A is the correct option. Option A is the correct option. Next question: Among lithium chloride, beryllium chloride, boron chloride, carbon chloride, the covalent bond character follows the order. Covalent. Bond character. They are asking covalent bond character. Now see here, we have they have given us lithium chloride, then beryllium chloride, then boron chloride, and carbon chloride. Yes, across the period, what happens? See, if you want to speak about uh, bond, uh, sorry, covalent bond character, we need to discuss about electronegativity. As you move across the period, we know that electronegativity increases. Correct. So when electronegativity increases, the electronegativity difference between the element. See here, the elements are lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon. So as I move from lithium to beryllium, beryllium to boron, boron to carbon. Not chlorine, boron to carbon. What is happening? The electronegativity is increasing. So carbon is more electronegative, and which is the other element? Other element is chlorine. Yes. So the electronegativity difference between the element and chlorine it goes on decreasing because we know that chlorine is most electronegative. This is also more. If this is say two point three, this is three point five. So this is what? This is less electronegative. So electronegativity difference when you move like this, it will increase. So as you move from left to right, since the electronegativity increases, the difference between electronegativity difference between this element and chlorine it decreases. So electronegativity difference between element, it might be lithium, so and chlorine it decreases. Correct. So accordingly. As electronegativity difference decreases, I've told you when we have more covalent character, when the electronegativity difference is either less or zero. So as electronegativity difference decreases, covalent character, covalent character increases. So which is more covalent? Carbon tetrachloride is more covalent. So this is having more covalent character. Then comes boron. Trichloride BCl three, and then comes BeCl two, and then comes LiCl. 
S. So lithium chloride is less covalent or I can say it is more ionic. Yes. So this is the correct order. This is the correct order of covalent character which supports this order that will be the correct option. So let us see lithium. So Okay, they have come given in increasing order. Okay, so lithium chloride is less covalent than beryllium chloride, which is less covalent than boron chloride, which is less covalent than carbon tetrachloride. So this is option C is the correct option. Option C is the correct option. Which one of the following formula formulae does not correctly represent the bonding capacities of the two atoms involved? Okay, so here there is phosphorus. Same like your ammonium ion. Okay, so this is P, four hydrogens and plus. Plus represents what? Two, one electron is lost here. Okay, oxygen, fluorine, fluorine. Okay, then here it is nitrogen. This is double bond, single bond OH and this is a coordinate bond. And here it represents what? Carbon. So here phosphorus is having one electron lost. So it is just represented as plus. Oxygen can have the tendency to form four, two bonds. So it is with two fluorine atoms. So it is molecule OF2. Yes, and this is HNO3. This is also correct. What about this? Observe the last option, students. Carbon has the valency of four. Yes, if I mark this carbon specially with asterisk, if you see this carbon, actual valency of carbon is what? It is four. That means it can combine four different atoms only or it can form single double bonds at varies. Carbon is forming how many? Here carbon has showed the valency of one, two, three, four, five. Yes. Hence this formula is not correct because carbon has maximum valency of four. So this is not the correct formula. This is not the correct formula. Yes, it is not the correct formula. Next question. Among the following, which compound will show highest lattice energy? Highest KF, NAF, CSF and rubidium. So let us consider which shows highest lattice energy. So options given are KF, NAF, CSF and last option is RBF. Okay. So we know that lattice energy is what? Lattice energy means what we have discussed. It is the energy released or energy required. I'll say it like this. But the energy required to break one mole of ionic crystals. One mole of ionic crystal. Okay, into constituent ions. When you compare these all and if you want to find where highest lattice energy is there, we will consider the factors which affect the lattice energy. For the compounds containing ions of same charge, if the ions are of same charge, let us verify. So I will not worry about anion because all are same. Now consider cations. Cation one is K plus, second one is Na plus, third one is cesium plus, fourth one is Rb plus. Why I have written plus? Because all belong to group one and they all exhibit a valency of plus one. So they have same charge. They are the ions of same charge. So I will not worry about the charge. We will discuss about size of the ions. See, as you move down the group, what happens to the atomic size? Atomic size increases and hence the ionic size. So as you move down the group, the ionic size increases. Yes. So lattice energy decreases with increase in size. Are you understanding? If the size is more, so let me say, Potassium ion is having so much size. Sodium ion will have so much size. Cesium ion will be still bigger. And rubidium ion will be still bigger. Yes. So as the size of the ion in increases. So is, is the size of the ion increasing? Yes. As the size of the ion increases, the distance between the nuclei increases. Yes. So as size of ion increases, bond length increases. Therefore, stability decreases as bond length increases, energy, energy required to break such bonds decreases. Yes, or I can say lattice energy. Please mark these points. Lattice energy increases as 
size of ions decreases. So as size of ions decreases, lattice energy increases. So where size of the ion is least, it is K. Therefore, I can say, sorry, potassium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. So this is sodium, this is potassium, this is rubidium, this is cesium. So where size is least, their energy will be more. So as size of the ion decreases, lattice energy increases. Therefore, I can conclude saying sodium fluoride, sodium fluoride has got highest ionization, lattice energy. Sodium fluoride has got highest lattice energy. Is that right? So sodium fluoride, NaF has got highest lattice energy. Next question. The species having bond angles of 120 degrees, ClF3, NCl3, BCl3, PH3. Let us see. So options are ClF3, then NCl3, BCl3, PH3. See, there are these two are belonging to same group. This is 17 group and this is 13 group. Okay. Where bond angle can be 120? The bond angle has to be 120 degrees. This is the question of hybridization. Yes. When we have 120 bond angle, I have discussed with you. If it is SP hybridization, the geometry is linear and bond angle is 180 degrees. If it is sp2 hybridization, the geometry is trigonal and bond angle is 120 degrees. If it is sp3 hybridization, the bond angle, the geometry is tetrahedral and bond angle is 109.5 degrees. Yes. So base where in which of the following the hybridization is sp2. I know we know how to find hybridization. H is equal to half V plus M minus C plus A, correct? So first one, let me take. So that is equal to H half is half into valence electrons are seven plus bonded are three. Seven plus three is 10 and it is two fives are 10. So for this H is equal to five. What will be the hybridization? Hybridization will be SP3D, okay? Then H is equal to second one I'm doing uh, five half into five valence electrons plus three bonded. So five plus three, this is zero only. So five plus three is eight, two fours are eight. So H is equal to four, hybridization is sp3, correct? Third one, BCl3, half uh, boron, there are three valence electrons plus three, minus zero plus zero. So three plus three is six, two threes are six. So it is H is equal to three, sp2 hybridization. Last one, let us verify, half, Phosphorus, it is 5 plus 3 minus 0 plus 0. 8, so 2 fours are 8. H is equal to 4, so it is sp3 hybridization. So sp2 hybridization gives a geometry of 120 degrees and with a hybrid with a bond angle of 120 degrees and a geometry of trigonal planar. So which is that option? It is BCL3. So this formula helps out very much. So which is the correct option? It is BCL3. Bond angle is 120 degrees. Okay. Which of the following is correct order of dipole moment? So all the cases, NH3 is there, BF3 is there, NF3 is there, H2O is there. Write the structure, you will get to know the bond dipole moment. First one is what? NH3. NH3. So nitrogen. Please don't forget about nitrogen. Don't just write the bonds. You know that nitrogen is having one lone pair also, which is next one, BF3, they have said boron. So this is, boron doesn't have any lone pairs. Then next, NF3, they have said N. Lone pairs are present. This is F. F, F, and last one is H2O. And oxygen of high water molecule has got two lone pairs. Is that right? So these are all the structures. Now let us try to put the dipole moment. And we know how to put the dipole moment, right? For NF, NH3, it is like this. This is there. 
and this is also like this. Nitrogen is more electronegative, plus there is the lone pair because of lone pairs. So this will be resultant dipole. For BF3, it is towards fluorine because fluorine is more electronegative and all the dipoles cancel out each other. Therefore, we'll see the dipole moment. And here, fluorine is more electronegative. This fluorine is also more electronegative. Here also, therefore, I'll show it like this, but there is lone pairs which contribute to some dipole moment. Water, oxygen is more electronegative. So I will show the dipole moment like this. And it is also because of the two lone pairs of electrons. Therefore, I can say, what we can say here is a uh, dipole moment of, if you look dipole moment of NH3, we all, already know it. It is 1.47 d by, correct? BF3, what will be the dipole moment here? It will be zero. NF3, is it zero? No, it is cancelled here, but there is net resultant dipole because of the lone pairs. So I cannot say it is 1.47 like NH3. It is less, but not zero. And it is 0 0.23 d by. Yes, and water we know. Water dipole moment is 1.85 d by. So which is... Having least dipole moment, arrange them in the order. The least dipole moment is BF3. Then comes what? 0 0.23, that is NF3. Then comes what? 1.47, that is NH3. And then 1.85, that is water. So this is the arrangement in the order of increasing order of dipole moment. Correct order of dipole moment, which is correct BF3, NH3, NF3, and H2O. So option BF3, NF3 comes first. I'm sorry. Least it is less than NH3 and then H2O. So option B is the correct option. Yes. Why BF3 molecule had got a zero dipole? Because it is symmetrical molecule, right? Okay. The rest all they are unsymmetrical polyatomic molecules. Okay. I'm sorry. Next question. Which of the following has maximum dipole moment? Again, the same question. Carbon dioxide, CH4, that is methane, ammonia, and NF3. Let us take the examples. So we will do it once again. So first one is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. Then they have said which one? Methane. So everywhere there is hydrogens. Where there is symmetrical molecule, dipole moment will be zero. Okay. Then NH3, just now we have seen. Then NF3. Correct. Very, I'm taking all the questions very properly because five to six questions are expected from this topic. Okay. Now, here, oxygen is more electronegative. Therefore, I will show the dipole moment like this. This side also, dipole moment like this. So, both of them cancel out each other, right? Here, carbon is more electronegative. So, I will show it towards carbon. But if you observe the first and second examples, both are symmetrical molecules. Okay, we'll see. Here, nitrogen is more electronegative. So I will show the dipole moment like this. And with that, there is addition of dipole moment because of lone pairs. Here also the same thing, but here chlorine is more electronegative. Correct. Okay, fine. Now see, uh, see this molecule and this molecule, both are what? They are symmetrical. So here they cancel out each other to give net dipole moment equal to zero. So the net dipole moment is zero. What about NH3? It is unsymmetrical molecule. So net dipole moment is not zero. And we have seen the net dipole moment in the previous example for NH3. It is how much? 1.47 d by. And even for NF3, we have seen it is also not zero. Though it, there is symmetry, but there is a lone pair of electrons which contributes for certain dipole moment. And that is 0 0.23 d by. Yes. So what question they have asked us, which of the following molecules has maximum dipole moment? 
Okay. So in this, both are zero. Fine. In case of NH3 and NF3, if you com compare, in NH3 molecule, that is in ammonia molecule, hydrogen is less electronegative than nitrogen. Hence, the dipole moment of each NH bond is towards where? Towards nitrogen. And it creates a very high net dipole moment. Yes, along with these lone pairs of electrons. Whereas in NF3, fluorine is more electronegative than nitrogen. Therefore, the dipole moments on each fluorine, it is opposite to that of lone pair. See, lone pair is in this direction and NF dipole moments are in this direction. Hence, reducing a net, hence reduces the net dipole moment. Therefore, these two are zero only. The dipole moment of NH3 is more than the dipole moment of NF3. So the question is, which is having maximum dipole moment? Which molecule has maximum dipole moment? It is which one? It is NH3. Next comes NF3 and rest two are zero. Rest two are zero, correct? Moving to the next question. Which of the following sets of molecules will have zero dipole moment? Which of the following sets of molecules will have zero dipole moment? Options. Ammonia is given. Beryllium difluoride. Water. 1,4-dichlorobenzene. Okay. Boron trifluoride. Okay. We will consider all the examples. Zero. Which of the following sets will have zero? Okay. Fine. First one. What is the option? Ammonia. NH3. Beryllium difluoride. BEF2. Water, H2O, and 1,4-dichlorobenzene. I'll show you the structure. This is benzene, 1,4-dichloro. Dichloro, okay. So this is the structure of 1,4-dichloro. If you see, ammonia is not having, it is not equal to zero, correct? This is zero. Mu is also not equal to zero. And this is also zero because there is symmetrical molecule, yes? So they are out of the four, two are not having zero dipole moment. Fine. Boron trifluoride, BF3. Hydrogen fluoride, HF. Carbon dioxide, CO2. 1,3 dichlorobenzene. This is structure of benzene, 1,3. So this will have some dipole moment, yes? This is dipole moment is zero. This is not equal to zero. This is also not equal to zero. And BF3 is equal to zero because they cancel out each other. So two of them are not having zero dipole moment. Again, third option, nitrogen trifluoride. We have seen NF3. It is, I'm sorry, NF3. It is not equal to zero. Okay. Then beryllium difluoride, BEF2. It is equal to zero. Then third option, carbon dioxide, CO2. It is also, it is also equal to zero. And last option is 1,3 dichlorobenzene, this one. It is not equal to zero. It is not equal to zero. Okay, so there are only two which are equal to zero. Fourth option, boron trifluoride, BF3. So dipole moment is equal to zero. Next option, beryllium difluoride, BEF2, dipole moment is equal to zero. Yes, I will show you all the structures also. Carbon dioxide, CO2, dipole moment is equal to zero. Then 1,4 dichlorobenzene, this one, dipole moment is equal to zero. So if you see here, boron, trifluoride, Beryllium difluoride, carbon dioxide, benzene, one comma four. Correct. So if you consider all of them, see here, fluorine is more electronegative. So it is shown like this. Fluorine is more electronegative. Fluorine is more electronegative. So net dipole moment cancels out each other and becomes zero. Here also fluorine is more electronegative. Fluorine is more electronegative. So net dipole moment cancels out and becomes zero. 
Here, oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, so they will both cancel out, and the net dipole moment is zero. Here, carbon and Cl. So these all these represent what? These represent carbon carbon rings. So this is a carbon ring. So carbon and Cl, chlorine is more electronegative. Here also chlorine is more electronegative. So the net dipole moment will be zero. Yes. So it is option four, which has got all the four molecules with net dipole moment equal to zero. Net dipole moment equal to zero. Yes. Next, consider the molecules CH four, NH three, and H two O. Which of the given statements is false? The H O H bond angle in water is smaller than NH N H N H bond angle in NH three. Okay. CH four, NH three, H two O. First, we will write the bond angles and see. Okay. So C H four. Then we have N H three. Then we have H two O. Okay. So if I want to find the bond angle, I have to first go for hybridization. H is equal to half V minus L minus half. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. So the formula is V plus the monovalent atoms minus cation plus anion. Okay, so for hydrogen, uh, sorry for CH four, half carbon valence electrons are four, plus it is forming four. So this becomes zero only. Four plus four is eight. So two ones are two fours are. So H is equal to four. So it is sp three hybridization. Nitrogen half valence electrons are five. It is forming three bonds minus zero plus zero. Here also minus zero plus zero. There is no charge. Eight two fours are again. Hydrogen is also four. It should be also sp three hybridized. Here half uh, H two O oxygen is the central atom. Six. It is forming with two minus zero plus zero. So it eight again. H is also oxygen is also. Having four hybrid orbitals, it should be also sp three. Very, very, very excellent question here. So expected geometry is what you can see here: carbon. This is the geometry for methane. If you see ammonia, there is sp three hybridization, but all of them are not having bonding electrons. See, nitrogen is having five valence electrons. Three are involved in bonding, and there is one lone pair. Therefore, the nitrogen, you know, according to V S E P R theory, not only just hybridization we have to explain. So, according to V S E P R theory, here there are only bond pairs. Therefore, there will be only bond pair bond pair repulsion. That will give its structure. It will give its arrangement such that it will occupy. Maximum away from each other, so that there is minimum repulsion, and therefore the geometry comes out to tetrahedral. And the tetrahedral bond angle is what? The tetrahedral bond angle is one hundred and nine point five degrees. Okay, correct. Okay. In case of ammonia, there is one lone pair on nitrogen. Therefore, there is lone pair bond pair repulsions, and also bond pair bond pair repulsions. And we know that by V S E P R theory, lone pair bond pair repulsions are much stronger than bond pair bond pair repulsions because lone pairs are around the central atom, whereas bond pairs are restricted to the two atoms. So they will push, they will push the bond pairs closer, and therefore the ge geometry will not remain tetrahedral. Instead, it will be, instead it will be pyramidal, and this geometry is called. distorted geometry it is called distorted geometry yes and therefore the bond angle will not remain 109 as expected for sp3 hybridization it becomes 107 degrees yes similarly if you consider water similarly if you consider water what will happen is in case of water though the hybridization is though the hybridization is sp3 Though the hybridization is sp3, you know that when you write the structure for water, it is like this. Along with bond pairs, oxygen has two lone pairs. Oxygen has two lone pairs. So, along with the bond pair bond pair repulsions or lone pair bond pair repulsions, there are lone pair lone pair repulsions. There are lone pair bond pair repulsions as well as bond pair. 
bond pair repulsions. And you know that lone pair, lone pair repulsions are stronger than lone pair, bond pair, which are stronger than bond pair, bond pair. Therefore, what happens? There will be repulsion between the two lone pairs and the lone pair, bond pair repulsions are there and also bond pair, bond pair repulsions are there due to which the bond angle becomes still shorter. That is, it becomes 104.5 degrees. 104.5 degrees. And the geometry of the molecule will be bent or you can call it as inverted V. It will be bent or inverted V understanding. So though the hybridization is sp3, you have to observe uh, with sp3 hybridization, is it having only bond pairs? Or if it is having lone pairs, how many lone pairs? It, it varies because when there are only bond pairs, there will be only bond pair, bond pair repulsions and the molecule will have tetrahedral geometry. Similar with the CH3Cl, here also, geometry will be tetrahedral only. Yes. But if there is one lone pair, then along with bond pair, bond pair repulsions, there will be lone pair, bond pair repulsions also. And these are stronger than bond pair, bond pair. So it is distorted geometry. This geometry, what you are seeing, the original geometry, symmetrical geometry is tetrahedral only for sp3. But this is distorted geometry and that is pyramidal for NH3. Whereas for water, there are two lone pairs. So lone pair, lone pair repulsions exist. Lone pair, bond pair repulsions exist as well as bond pair, bond pair repulsions exist. Therefore, the geometry will be bent. This is also distorted geometry and with a bond angle of 104.5 degrees. So now with this much explanation, let us see which statement is correct. The HOH bond angle in H2O is smaller than NH3 bond, HNH bond angle in NH3. Which of the statements is false? They have said this is correct because water bond angle is 104 and that is smaller than NH3 that is 107. The HCH bond angle in CH4 is larger than HNH bond angle in NH3, correct? This is 109.5 whereas this is 107. The HCH bond angle in CH4, the HNH bond angle in NH3 and HOH bond angle in H2O are all greater than 90, yes. CH4 109.5, NH3 107 and water it is 104.5. The HOH bond angle in H2O is larger than HCH bond angle in HCH4, wrong. HOH bond angle is 104.5, HCH bond angle is 109.5, so it is lesser than CH4 bond angle. So wrong statement is option D, that is the wrong statement. That is the wrong statement, is that right? Next question. I, I hope you have understood what I told, what I said. Yes, the correct order of increasing bond length of CH, CO, CC, and CC double bond C. Okay, they have given four options. So it is one option is CH, another option is CO. Next is carbon carbon, and last is carbon double bonded carbon. Here we have to understand two concepts. One is as bond order increases. And second is as electronegativity of one atom increases. Okay, so as bond order increases. So here you can see as bond order is increasing. So this is one bond order, this bond order is two. Bond length will decrease, correct? So which is having shorter bond length in CC and CH? C double bond. So here I'll say bond length as bond order increases, bond length decreases. So I can say C single bond C bond length is more than C double bond C. Correct? Okay. When you compare CH, CO and CC, which is more electronegative? CO is more electro, O is more negative. Then carbon, then hydrogen. So which will have, as electronegativity increases, bond length decreases. Correct? Therefore, which will have shorter, more bond length? CO will have more bond length then CC and then CH, correct? Understanding? But here there is carbon and here there is oxygen. Therefore, with all this information, I can conclude saying that the bond length of CH is less than the bond length of CC, which is less than the bond length of CO, which is less than the bond length of CC. So this is the correct order. This is the correct order. And let us see which verifies our proper order. CH bond length is less than CC. 
which is less than CO, which is less than CC. Yes, so this is the correct order. Is that fine? Okay, next question. Which of the following structures is most preferred and hence of lowest energy for SO3? Okay, they are given the structure. Sulfur, oxygen. Sulfur is having what? See, sulfur, we need to understand. I have told you in the first question itself. As soon as you look at the structures, don't come to the conclusions. Yes, the first structure is, yes, double bond O, single bond O, single bond O. Correct? Second structure is, yes, double bond O and here O. Then S, all of the oxygens are single bonded. This is the structure. Last is S double bond O, double bond O, double bond O, which is most favored structure, preferred structure. First option question is SO3. It is sulfur trioxide. Hence, these two are ruled out because this is SO2 and this is SO4. SO no, they are ruled out. So let us observe. Only these three, these two. Now see, sulfur falls below oxygen. Oxygen, sulfur, selenium we have. So therefore, how many valence electrons for sulfur? There are six valence electrons. Are all the valence electrons involved in bonding? Two, three, four. Only four are involved. So this is not the right structure. Yes, if you observe this, two, four, six. So this is the right structure. There is one more reason I'll tell you why. When we speak about double bond, one is sigma bond, another one is pi bond. So sigma bond, pi bond, sigma bond, pi bond. Okay. So this has maximum number of covalent bonds. Yes or no? This is having maximum number of covalent bonds. Here there are only four covalent bonds. Here there are six covalent bonds. And this covalent bonds in, involve what? It involves electrons from P orbital forming pi bonds I'm speaking. So P pi and it involves electrons of D orbital forming pi bonds. So it involves P pi D pi bonding. It involves P pi D pi bonding also. Yes. So there are maximum number of covalent bonds and it involves P pi D pi bonding. So this is the correct structure because that will have lowest energy and therefore highest stability. Lowest energy and therefore highest stability. Next question. The correct order of increasing bond angles in the following triatomic species. NO2 plus NO and NO2 and NO2 minus. Okay. So three molecules are given. We will verify. So it is NO2 plus NO2 and then NO2 minus. Yes, with the help of Lewis structure, with the help of Lewis structures, Lewis for formula, you can find the Lewis structures for all of them. Yes, I'll just write, you can see here. N is having a coordinate bond with oxygen and here there is a double bond, lone pairs. Here I will balance the lone pairs, oxygen. Okay, then minus. So this is NO2 minus. Then for another night, NO2. Here there is double bond, oxygen coordinate bond and one electron. One, two, three, four. Yes, this is NO2. Odd electron, uh, odd electron molecule. Then N, coordinate bond oxygen and double bond oxygen having positive charge here. This is NO2 plus. So if you observe the structures, if you just look at the structures here, I can tell you the bond angles here. This NO2 minus has got bond angle of 115 degrees. This has got bond angle of 134 degrees. Because see, this is a lone pair. It will push the electron. So bond angle decreases. And here there's one electron. So bond angle is slightly more. And what is the bond angle here? Here it is 180 degrees. Here it is 180 degrees. So what is the correct order of increasing bond angles, which is least? NO2 minus is least, then comes NO2 and then comes NO2 plus, NO2 plus. So this is the increasing order of bond angles, increasing order of bond angles. So where is our correct option? NO2 minus, then NO2 and then NO2 plus. So this is the correct option. That is the correct option. 
Next question, the electronegativity difference between nitrogen and fluorine is greater than that between nitrogen and hydrogen. Yet the dipole moment of NH3 is 1.5 dy is larger than that of NF3, which is 0 0.2. Why? Why is it so? Now see, when we were discussing about dipole moment, we have seen questions on this dipole moment. We know that if you consider NF3, and a lone pair on nitrogen and you consider NH3 and a lone pair on nitrogen and we have written the resultant dipole here it is towards fluorine towards fluorine towards fluorine so it will cancel out but the resultant dipole is for lone pairs here here it is towards nitrogen nitrogen is more electronegative yes and the resultant dipole is here this is what we have studied the dipole moment of NF3, the dipole moment of NF3 is 0 0.24 dy and that of NH3 is 1.47 or 48 dy you can write. Okay. The difference is due to the fact that the dipole moment in NF3 if you consider, the dipole moment due to NF bonds in NF3 are in opposite directions to the dipole moment of the lone pairs on nitrogen. Can you see here? They are in opposite directions. So they are in opposite directions. Yes. So they partially cancel out. They will partially cancel out. Whereas the dipole moment of NH bonds in NH3, they are in the same direction with the dipole moment of lone pairs, with the dipole moment of lone pairs on nitrogen atom, which will add up. Yes, it will add up. Therefore, which is our correct option? So let us see which is our correct option. In NH3, atomic dipole and bond dipole are in opposite directions, whereas in NF3, no, this is not the uh, correct option. In NH3 as well as NF3, the atomic dipoles, they are no, that is also not. In NH3, atomic dipole means what? It is due to lone pairs and bond pairs dipole are in same direction. Yes, whereas in NF3, these are in opposite directions. This is the correct option. Option C is the right option. <coughs> Excuse me. In NH3, as well as in NF3, the atomic dipoles and bond dipoles are in opposite directions. Option D is also wrong. So the correct option is what? In NH3, the atomic dipole, that is our lone pair dipole and bond dipoles are in same direction, whereas in NF3, they are in opposite directions. That is the correct option. Yes, okay. The correct order in which the OO bond length increases in the following is O2 less than H2O2, then O3, O3 less than H2O2, and then O2. So they have given three molecules. The three molecules are one is O2, then second one is what? It is H2O2, and third one is O3. Now see, oxygen molecule we know. Two oxygen atoms are held by a double bond. H2O2 structure is H, O, O and then H. And ozone, if you look, it is either having this structure or it is having this structure. Okay. So this is resonance structures of ozone. Fine. So O2 bond length is what? It is a double bond. Therefore, bond order in O2, if you observe the bond length, the bond length of oxygen oxygen in O2 is 1.21 angstrom. Yes, it is the bond length. If you see in H2O2, it is a single bond. Therefore, the bond length of OO in H2O2 is 1.48 angstrom. 1.48 angstrom. And here, because of resonance, there is partial double bond character. Therefore, bond length of OO in ozone, it is 1.28 angstrom. So, which is the correct order? Where there is least bond length, it is in O2. The bond length is least. Then comes O3 and then comes H2O2. Or I can write where it is highest. H2O2 has got highest bond length, then comes O3 and then comes O2. So which one is our given option? That will be preferred. That will be preferred. So where it is correct option? H2O2. Yes, O2 is having less bond length. Oxygen, oxygen bond length is less in O2 than in O3, which is less in H2O2.
Yes. Okay. The correct sequence of increasing covalent character is represented by. Now we know covalent character is given how. See, all the three are chlorides are same, anions are same. I will require. I will look at cations. So covalent character. These are ionic compounds, and I am being asked to explain the covalent character. Therefore, which rule I will follow? It is Fajan's rule. Fajan's rule. There are three rules. First rule says. smaller the size of cation smaller the size of cation more is the covalent character second rule says larger the size of anion anion more is the covalent character third rule says larger the charge larger the charge on either of the ions either of the ions more is the covalent character here they have given anion same so i will not worry cations lithium chloride sodium chloride beryllium chloride okay so covalent character in a compound is observed by fajan's rule so lithium is here sodium is here and beryllium is here okay between lithium and smaller the size which one is having smaller size lithium is having smaller size correct so lithium is having smaller size are you all getting okay and here let us identify so lithium has as you move down the group size increases when you compare lithium with beryllium beryllium is having smaller size correct okay so beryllium is having smaller size now compare the charges this is plus this is plus this is plus 2 as the charge on cation or any of the ions increase the covalent character increases so as a whole beryllium chloride is more covalent then comes what so i can say beryllium chloride is more covalent then comes a sodium chloride i'm sorry then comes which one lithium chloride then comes lithium chloride yes because that is having smaller size so that is more covalent then comes what sodium chloride so which is the correct option sodium chloride is less covalent then comes lithium chloride then comes beryllium chloride here this is more covalent so it is correct increasing covalent character sodium chloride is less covalent than lithium chloride lithium chloride is less covalent than beryllium chloride so the covalent character in ionic compound it is being governed by what it is being governed by fajan's rule so you will observe in case of cation smaller the size of cation in case of anion you will observe larger the size of anion and in case of uh, if uh, if you are observing for charge it can be either of the ions larger the ch charge so fajan's rule says more covalent character is possible when the size of cation is small or the size of anion is large or the charge on either of the ions is more that will be more covalent that will be more covalent so correct option is option c it is option c next question which one of the following would have permanent dipole moment sif4 sf4 xef4 bf3 which of the following would have permanent dipole good question for a dipole moment we know the hybridize we should be knowing the hybridization and shape okay so let, let me write sif4 first option they have given si f4 so this is sif4 okay so fluorine fluorine so fluorine fluorine here i have fluorine atom here i have fluorine atom here i have fluorine atom then second option is sf4 so sf4 is written like this because sulfur has got a lone pair sf4 there are two electrons f f f and f sf4 then we have xef4 xef4 is having this structure planar structure because out of four lone pairs there are two lone pairs one above and one below and last one is bf3 bf3 boron is having three electrons and this is correct getting so how to identify we already know h is equal to half valence electrons on silicon so half silicon valence electrons are four my plus uh, it is forming four bonds eight so it is uh, two ones are two fours are so sf sp3 hybridization 
Similarly, here half sulfur valence electrons are six. It is forming four minus four. So six minus four is two. Two ones are uh, two ones are. So it is a two. Correct. Okay. So six sulfur. It is forming four bonds minus charge. There is no charge. So six minus four is two. Two ones are two. So this is sp hybridization. It is sp three dehybridization. Two, three, four, five. Sp three dehybridization. Xenon half. Then xenon has got eight electrons in its outermost shell. Minus four bonds are there. So eight minus four is four. So it is sp three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sp three d two. And this is we know sp two. Correct. So if you observe the dipole moments here, chlorine is more electronegative. I can show it like this. Don't forget to write the positive sign here. Correct. So dipole moment is what it is zero, and here it is like this again, like this, like this. It is towards fluorine, but here it is opposite. So dipole moment is not zero. Here it is near fluorine, and this is like this. So dipole moment becomes zero for two lone pairs, and compare this, it becomes zero. And here also dipole moment is zero. We know towards fluorine, net dipole moment becomes zero. So where Dipole moment is not zero. That will have permanent dipole moment, and it is for SF. It is for SF four. Correct. H two O is dipolar, whereas BF two is not. It is because, because again dipole moment. If you see H O H along with two dipoles, bond dipoles, there are also atomic dipoles. That is due to lone pairs. Correct in water. So this is in this direction towards oxygen, more electronegative. Here also towards more electronegative, and this also adds up. So it is a dipole. It is having polarity, and that is one point eight five d by. Correct. So measure of polarity is given by dipole moment. Whereas BeF two, if you see here, both the dipoles cancel out. Both the dipoles cancel out. They are in opposite direction. So dipole moment is zero. So it is non-polar. So what is the correct option? So I can say overall value of dipole moment of a polar molecule it depends on its geometry and shape. That is vectorial addition. If they are in same direction, they will add up and it will give resultant dipole. If they are in opposite direction, they will cancel out. Water has angular structure with bond angle of one hundred and four point five. Correct. So it has dipole moment. However, if you see BF two, it is a linear molecule. The dipoles are in opposite directions and they will cancel out each other. So, which is the correct option? Electronegativity of fluorine is greater than oxygen. No, H two involves hydrogen bonding, whereas BF two is discrete molecule. No, that is not the required answer. H two O is linear molecule. BF two is angular. No, H two O is angular and BF two is linear. So, dipole moment is because of the shape of the molecules. Yes, and because of the shape, there exists dipole. So, we have done with some questions. In the next class, I will do next set of questions. Please practice all the concepts so that it will be helpful for you all to understand the questions, multiple choice questions. Thank you.